Good morning, Park Church. Good morning. I love hearing these stories like Pastor Matt just uh, talked about, and that is true of so many of you and uh, your hearts. So I join him in saying uh, thank you for loving God and reflecting his love uh, to those around. If you weren't here last week, we're going to kind of do part two from, uh, as Kate prayed, uh, what we know of in the Bible is a parable that Jesus taught, the Good Samaritan. And now, there, uh, good, I, did, I didn't have it fully switched on. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. So we're going to do part two in, uh, in this good story, although my voice does carry. I could kind of see you, yeah, back. Last week we looked at this and uh, about loving God and loving our neighbor. And uh, basically we became aware of it, like the Jewish people of Jesus' day. We talked about ways that we, when we see it, we realize the beauty of, of this. Uh, no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friend, the Bible says. We also suggested a way to get started on that if we aren't. Most of you are beyond the starting point. But I encourage you, as well as my wife and I have, is knowing the names of our neighbors and engaging in conversations. And like some of you said, I found it to be really helpful at times to say, when it seems appropriate, how might I pray for you? Or like the group we heard of this morning, heard about, uh, just meeting practical needs from a heart of compassion. I want to read this with you again this morning. Uh, whether you were here last week or not, this is worth hearing again and again. You actually read this during the week if you're in our Bible reading process. And so uh, we're a little bit soaked in this. And I want to call out a couple questions today that we did not work with uh, last week. So here we go. Uh, let's read this together. It comes from Luke 10. And Jesus, as he was going along the way and uh, doing his teaching and healing kind of ministry uh, and, and uh, interacting with many people, we read in Luke 10, verse 25. Pull out your Bible or read or your device, whatever you'd like. Follow carefully. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus Teacher, he said, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, well, what is written in the law? What, uh, what do you read there? And he or the lawyer said, well, you, well, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you'll live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, well, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity or compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, that's like money, and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Now, when we read this and discussed it some last week, and many of you who read it during this past week, and as we've read it again today, this, if we read carefully, this calls to question one of the main questions that we can ask ourselves. 
How is it that we respond to such a story? And, and to zero in a little bit more closely, are you thinking about this? When I read this, I think, how is it that I would be a person that lo would love more and more like this? We recognize the Good Samaritan as a tremendous story, a very good teaching, an excellent way to live life. Very few would take exception to that. Truth be told, when we ponder it, though, we'd end up saying, but like, I don't tend to live that way. The, the idea here would be Jesus says to the expert in the Jewish law, live like that consistently and faithfully and you'll have eternal life. How do we respond to what Jesus is teaching here? We don't naturally live and love like this, do we? We don't. The expert in the Jewish law, he, he knew this truth. The Old Testament law boiled down to two things. Love the Lord your God, fully, richly, love your neighbor as yourself. He knew this truth. He knew well enough to speak it and talk about it. Jesus then challenged him, though, didn't he? He challenged him to go out and live it. Possibly this Jewish law expert was really effective at knowing about it, talking about it, but not really living it. What do we say about that? How many of us can easily, you know, talk the talk, but then every day we struggle with how do we walk the walk that we read about? That this is like us. This is like us, isn't it? So how do we love God and love our neighbor like this? If you're thinking like, you know, you can't actually go to a store and buy it, can you? Like it isn't even, I checked it out this week, you can't go to Amazon and by this kind of love. Uh, there's no way actually to go and earn it. Many of us wish for it, sing about it, wonder about it, talk about it, but realize what? Most of us, really, at the end of the day, are we not more prone to really be uh, more self-centered than more uh, self-sacrificial? We are bent that way, are we not? Or am I the only one? You know, we're bent that way. So we hear Jesus tell the story of the Good Samaritan and challenge the expert in the law. And we realize, well, yeah, but like I fall short. I fall short. How is it? Here's the question for today. How is it that we love more like this? I'm very fond of the idea of loving my neighbor well, but how do I learn to love like this? We go to other parts of the Bible to fully answer this. Just like when, when you're reading through the scripture, as hopefully you are, we've given you uh, this week, the year of the Bible, a way to read through together and be talking together. When we read through parts of the Bible, it'll call up questions like, how in the world would I love more like this? From other parts of the Bible, we learn that God actually loves us first like this, unexpectedly, undeservedly, and very sacrificially. We learn that we're invited to receive God's love that was fully demonstrated in Jesus Christ. And I want to pitch something to you today that's reflected in different parts of the scripture and was prayed about this morning and sung about already today. We don't love like this until we've received a love like this. Have you thought about that? Jesus said, as you love yourself, love your neighbor. Loving ourselves is kind of more natural. It's not a command to learn how to love yourself. It's an assumption that Jesus has. But then there's the hard part of loving God fully and loving others fully. Uh, the Apostle John, in 1 John chapter 4, tells us this. We love because God first loved us. 
Have you thought about that? When we hear Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan, one thing that we can be mindful of is that we do not love like this by knowing about this kind of love. We don't even love like this if we have the story of the Good Samaritan memorized, or like this Jewish expert in the law, if we have most of God's word memorized. Even if we could teach it to others, it still isn't necessarily loving others like this is talking about, is it? We don't love this like this by trying harder to love like this. Well, I'm just going to try to do better. So we, we have a bit of a dilemma, don't we, when we hear the story of the Good Samaritan. The Bible gives us an answer to this dilemma of how is it that we would be people who would more fully love so beautifully like this. And we don't love like this unless we have first received and are receiving a love like this. Have you thought about that? Now, it's astonishing to me when you, when you read Jesus' story here, uh, how the expert in the law responds to Jesus. Did you catch that? How is it that he responded? He asked questions. Jesus says, you got it right. It's about loving God and loving your neighbors, kind of like do this fully and always and you'll have eternal life. Huh. Jesus is also saying, love God first with everything you've got. Uh, do we do that? How is it that we, uh, this is a point of check for us. Do we love God first in a way that nothing or no one else really takes God's place as our, our source of hope? or a source of meaning, or a source of satisfaction. And then love your neighbor as yourself. One pastor put it nicely, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, this is making yourself seeking the measure of your self-giving. Huh. Do these two things regularly, consistently, fully, and you're good to go in God's kingdom. But then we say, I, I'm, I'm, I don't tend to be like that. The, the legal beagle here does not, do you notice how, what he doesn't do? He doesn't say, wow, I understand this, but I'm not, like, I, I'm really not living this way. He actually doesn't say, be merciful to me, a sinner. What does he do? It's what a lot of us do. He says, yeah, I know that. I know about loving God, and I know about loving my neighbor, that those are the two key things. What was his motive, though? He showed up that day to put Jesus to the test. We know that in verse 25. Some of us are like that. Well, I'm going to test this thing out. You know, most people don't live like what they talk, but I think I do. I, maybe God will grade on the curve. I think I'm a little better than most people. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm working hard at this, trying hard at this. I'm probably better than, like, you know, the person. You might be better than the person sitting next to you, right? Well, is, is that the idea? Get better than somebody next to you or keep trying harder or do better with this? That is not what Jesus is teaching in this parable. The expert in the law, he had an orientation of verse 29, says he was wanting to justify himself. For him, it all kind of went back to himself. And he, he wasn't saying, I can't get there from here. But the truth is, none of us do. And I want to call your attention to that day. We, at this point we, today, we don't actually end up loving like this until we first have received a love like this. Picture that. This expert in the law, he must have figured he could outthink and outdebate others. He probably taught these very principles about God and about love. But what he didn't do when he heard Jesus tell this story was fall to his knees in need and says, I, I'm not that way by myself. I'm not that way on my own. So the conversation ends, how? With Jesus challenging him, go and do likewise. That's where this account ends. Is that where it ends with you and with me? 
And I don't want it to end there today but it, because it begs a question. How is it that we would know a love and love more like this? In 1 John chapter 3 and in 1 John chapter 4, the Apostle John unpacks this at some length. I, I'm not going to take the time to read uh, this to you today. I would recommend that as we go along for your reading. It, it, embedded in that is this little phrase, we love because he first loved us. So I, let me just focus in on two things with you this morning. Do you know a God that loves you? You might say, well, of course, God loves me, but are we actually loved by God like this? What does the Bible say? I want to think about this with me. We're going to bring this thing in kind of for a landing here with two questions, right? But to, as we bring this in for a landing, I'm not asking you to fasten your seatbelt and put your tray table up. I'm going to ask you to do two other things. Ask two questions. Are we actually loved by God like this? And then if so, do we actually receive God's love? Do you and do we? You know, some of the verses I went back and looked at this week on this question, are we actually loved by God richly and deeply? You know, some of what the, listen to some of what the Bible says. We could go to the Psalms in the Old Testament. Like Psalm 86, listen to this, verse 15. God abounds. That means like it's overflowing. Full, God abounds in steadfast or loyal love and faithfulness. It's part of what God is like. Full of loyal, steadfast love. Psalm 136 says, God's steadfast love, what is it? Is it temporary? God's steadfast love endures forever. It's full and is permanent, is who he is and what he's like. You might say, well, how does that relate to me? There are verses like Zephaniah that I doubt if too many of us have studied fully recently. Like some of us would struggle with where in the world is that? It's in the Bible somewhere, you know? Zephaniah was a prophet in the Old Testament. In chapter 3, verse 17, it says, listen, the Lord God rejoices. That word is like delights. He rejoices, delights over you with gladness, and he will quiet you with his love. Some of you, when you think about that idea of being rejoiced in or delighted in, said, man, I've wanted that. You don't know how much I've wanted that. I didn't tend to have that real well in my family. Like, it was hard for me to, I didn't really feel that delighted in. Do you know that Scripture says, God's Word says, God is loving, loyal loving, and forever loyal loving. And on a personal level with His people, he rejoices. He delights. Do you know that God delights in you? That kind of love? He like knows your name. The Bible says in different ways, he, he like knows the number of hairs on your head. Now some of you are going, that's easy, you know? But, but that's, it. that's amazing. He knows the details of us and he, lo he delights. Loves us like that. You might say, well, what about the New Testament? Okay, listen up. We can go to verses like in, in Romans in chapter 5 and verse 8, and it says this, point blank. Listen to this. God shows his love for us while we were yet sinners, while we were like off the rails, even shaking our fists at him at times. God showed his love for us how? In that Christ died for us the full manifestation of his love. Sacrificial, undeserved, unexpected. Romans 8 goes on to say, in Christ, nothing will be able to separate us from God's love. Do you know that? Two other, two other ones. Ephesians 2, verse 4. God is rich in mercy because of the great love with which he has loved us. Is this not good? And it's true. 
John in 1 John chapter 4 says, the love of God was made manifest among us in Christ that we might live in him, live fully and live in love. So are you and am I actually loved by God? The Bible says yes and yes and beyond the yes that we can even imagine. Hmm. And is fully manifest in who Christ is and what he has done for us. God loves us with this deep compassion and mercy and loyal love. Do, do you know that? Do you, do you know that you're actually loved by God like this? Second question, and we'll wrap it up today, is if you know that, have you received, have we received God's love? It just, that's a simple question. It's one thing to know about it. Is it not another thing to receive it? It, it is. And the Bible talks about there are two ways that we receive God's love. If I were to ask you what are those two ways, what would you say? You know? The two ways the Bible talks about is receiving that uh, God's love is knowing that the full manifestation of who God is and what his love is, is in the person and work of Christ. That's why we celebrate. That's why we're going to go to the Lord's table communion in just a moment, because that was the fullness of God's love extended to us. And guess what? When we trust in Christ as a payment for our sin, it takes away our separation from the God of love, then what? We have done the key thing to receive God's love that we can then love like this. But until, we don't love like this until we've received a love like this. Are you thinking about that? If you're here today and you say, this is kind of new news to me. I mean, I know some about Jesus. There's, there's a, a cross that we have here. I, I've seen that. But, but the, the, the essence of what God has done to reach out to you and to me in love is he sent his son to live, to teach, to die, to be raised, his death that we might have life. He loved us that much. And our first thing we do is receive that gift that he's given to us in Christ. Have you done that? Have you done that? It, it matters now, and it matters for eternity. If you haven't, we'd love for you to take that step of faith today Move across that line of faith today. Put your trust not like in yourself, trying to justify yourself, but in a God who has loved you so deeply in this way. You might say, okay, I've done that, but I still don't live like this. I still am not living fully like this. This is the second way. It's a daily thing. Have you noticed that we need to like uh, and take the opportunity to daily be reminded of God's love? It's critical and, and core that we accept the person and work of Christ, place our faith in him. There's this other thing that's very daily. How is it that we remind ourselves daily of this kind of love? Do you preach, as it were, the gospel to yourself every day? You know, what, what's the good news here? The good news here uh, of Jesus, it, it doesn't start with what we do. It starts with what has been done. Do you know that? Do we go back to that every day? It isn't about, I'm going to love my neighbor better and do this and do that and do this, and then I'm good. Our love starts with remembering God and his love and what he's done. The gospel does not start with what we do. It starts with what God has done. Do we know that and remind ourselves of that? Every day, who is this God? And every day, he has done for us. And so I can now go and do. This is, this is important, friends. Otherwise, we're bent. To what, how are we bent? Maybe like this Jewish expert in the law who seems to have been bent, it goes back to me and what I can do. And I hope I'm doing better than others, and maybe God will be pleased with that. I think I'm trying hard enough. Maybe God will be pleased with that. I hope I'm going to end up being good enough at the end of the day. Maybe God will be pleased. Jesus says, huh? 
If you go and do likewise, you actually can't do that on your own. Do you know that? We place our, our bets, we place our hopes, we place our, our, our life in what has been done, not in what we can do on our own. So the gospel is. It's great news. It's very good news. We're going to sing about that again today and celebrate that. You have these two invitations. Have you crossed the line of faith? Have you personally known such love of God as the worship band comes up? Do you know this God of love? And have you placed your faith in the person and work of Christ? You have that opportunity even today as we sing and, and go to this time of communion today. And are you practiced? Are we practicing with one another, learning, reminding ourselves, preaching the gospel as it were to ourselves every day, that it's about what, who God is and what he's done. It is not about what we do and trying harder on our own. Do we know that? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this uh, profound story that, we, that Jesus told. We know of it as the Good Samaritan. Uh, great story wonderful way to live. We come before you today thanking you, Lord, that um, you are love, you personally love us and know us, and you love us so much that you unexpectedly, for us very un undeservedly and very sacrificially sent Christ we today celebrate what Christ has done, his death, that we might have life. May those who don't know you here today be wooed to the beauty of your love in Jesus. And we remind ourselves again, Lord, that it's about what you've done, not what we can do to earn our way. As we sing, as we go to this communion table, we invite your spirit to help us again know a love like this, that we might love more like this. In Jesus' name, amen.